Yo, yo, yo. If you tune in to me, you watching Gully TV. Listen. I got something I want to share with y'all. Um, as you all know, if you follow my platform, I uploaded a video a few days ago um, where I interviewed a, a correctional officer that worked at USP Marion in the federal um, prison system. And he spoke about, of course, the um, 35 year war between the DC blacks and the Aryan Brotherhood. And um, this, it's a very interesting topic. I think not only myself, but everyone probably is attracted to the topic. Um, the video that I did is doing really well. I noticed that after I uploaded the video that the DC Blacks and the Aryan Brotherhood became a topic on the internet. Like I'm seeing other videos. People, I'm basically telling y'all I'm watching people piggyback my videos, right? So um, there's nothing I could do about it. Like I said, it's a very interesting topic, but I would like to take this time um, to break down the difference between a black convict and a white convict. I'm going to tell you why. Um, while watching a lot of these videos about the Aryan Brotherhood and DC Blacks, I'm reading in the comments and you know you have people who serve time in in these institutions. They're 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 home now and they're on the internet and they comment on these videos. So you got um, it was a video about the DC Blacks and a group called the Pisces. I guess that's some uh, maybe a Asian gang or something like that. You know they kind of strong on the West Coast, but um, they tore up a um, a prison yard. You know, the blacks and the Pisces or whatever. And um, this video said that the Pisces basically got got the best of the black inmates during this war. And somebody was in the comments. They was like, yo, man, whenever I hear about a war going down in jails, the blacks are always on a losing end of it. Why is that? Why do you think that is and shit? So, um, of course, you know, you had somebody respond. Somebody was like, um, blacks lose they lose their battles a lot of times because they're not organized like the you know the rest of the groups that they're beefing with like the Pisces and the Aryan Brotherhood and shit like that. So when I heard that, that shit I'm a, I'm a, I'm black. That shit you know it it bothered me and shit like because I see it a lot too. I be reading these you know old stories and I be watching these videos and documentaries and i'm seeing the same thing that everybody else see the blacks lose a lot of fucking wars and shit you know when it comes down to going to war in these institutions and shit and um i believe i understand in my heart i understand why it's this way it's because of this um i noticed this when i was you know when i was doing my state time that when you Puerto Rican, it don't matter what city you're from. You can go over to their picnic table and get love. They're going to, you know, take care of you, talk to you, da-da-da-da-da. I've also seen that um, you can have a Puerto Rican guy from a city like New York, and he's in an institution, and he meet it, he run into a cousin from Philadelphia. Like, that's how it is on the East Coast, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, But anyway, the blacks and, the, um, and, and you know, other groups – going to war in prisons and um what you have is when it comes to the black the black car first thing that that niggas place at the top of of all priorities is geography where the guy from you dig um being geographical is just that's just how black people is and i don't know whether it comes from the fact that we were broken down into tribes and shit like that but yeah, um, it's a geographical thing, meaning if a guy is from, if I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania, and you got a guy from Texas or Baltimore or Philly or New Jersey, and we don't know each other, we probably not going to fuck with each other. We probably not going to blend, you know what I mean? Um, we tend to look at, 
other black men as strangers or a threat with um with reason with reason because of the double crosses the murders the shit that happens to us on the streets before we even get to the jail so you know if, if guys used to being double crossed by people who look like him they're not gonna assimilate and you know move move on the same accord in jail um getting back to my it took a few days for this this video that I'm doing right now to come into fruition. I watched a video about a guy, um, a convict in Utah. His name was Troy Kells, and he was a white supremacist. And if you've seen his documentary, you've seen he killed a black guy, stabbed him a whole bunch of times, stabbed him all in his head, dogged him out, and started screaming white power. He's a white supremacist. And... um The fact that he came to jail with maybe an assault case or something like that, or maybe a maybe maybe a murder. Let's say he got, he he came with a murder, or whatever the case it was that he came with. White guys, they don't have no problem with um, convicts. They don't have no problem with staying in the joint. They don't. I've seen. Um, and anybody that, that's watching this, if you ever went to the parole board or if you ever went up for parole with the white boys, like if it's some white boys going up for parole with you, you know that you want to get in that office and see that parole board and talk to them and shit and, you know, get your situation taken care of before one of these crazy ass white boys go in the office. Um, for some reason, white boys can do fucking time like barbaric I'm serious, like, they don't give a fuck. Uh, black men, convicts, even if a black guy got multiple life sentences, he trying to get back. He trying to get that shit back. His whole, you know, he's trying to get out of jail. He's trying to get out. Uh, you can have a black guy buried. He think he getting out one day. He trying to get out. White guys, if they got some cigarettes and some coffee... They don't give a fuck. Them niggas can go to them niggas can go to a private island, man, with with Tasmanian devils running around on the island. If them niggas got they got their coffee and um cigarettes, they don't give a fuck. They don't care. Um getting back to going into the fucking office, the parole office, you know, with the white boys and shit. White boy go in the fucking parole office and tell them um to kiss his ass. Tell everything that he pre premeditated. I'm I don't give a fuck, man. My old lady, she left me five years ago, or she left me three years ago. She ran off with my buddy. I don't give a fuck about parole. How much more time you got before you make parole? Ah, oh, man, I got five more years. I'm just gonna do it all, and I'll be looking at him like this cracker crazy as a motherfucker, like. He don't even want to go home. He don't even care. He just went to the parole board, tell them to kiss his ass. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I can't, I've, I've, I've thought and sat around for a few days, man, and I can't recall no white boys that I encountered in jail that couldn't jail. Like, they can do time. They can do time, man. They can do fucking time. Black guys, um, maybe it's due to you know, our upbringing or our, or our pedigree. Black people be trying to get to some comfort, man. <laughs> Black people be trying to get to some comfort, man. Um, seriously, like, black, a nigga be trying to get to some comfort, man. Them white boys, them niggas, them niggas do whole time, man. They don't give a fuck. Them niggas sleep on the fucking floor. They don't give a fuck. Them niggas sleep on the floor, man. Tell the CO, man, I ain't taking no fucking shower. Get the fuck away from my door. Um, they just hardcore criminals. So when I'm watching the um, the history on the Aryan Brotherhood and the um, the DC Blacks, and I'm I, it's there's one thing that's constant through the history of this shit, right? And it's the the white boys, they don't give a fuck about catching a new fucking case. Like, them 
uh, Barry, the ones that built that shit, I got to watch and shit from, I think another reason why the Aryan Brotherhood is so strong, they've been around, they've been around a long time, like, they built that shit in the 70s in California, and like, Tracy and San Quentin and all of them, that shit come from out there, right, them white boys was killing like a motherfucker early, early in the history of the, uh, the organization, Early in the history of the Aryan Brotherhood organization, they was killed before it got to Barry Mills and them, before it got to Tyler Bingham, before it got to Thomas Silverstein. Them niggas was, them white boys was killing up shit, man, in them institutions. Like, um, of course, they've had long drawn out issues with black people and in, 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 on the West Coast, the black gorilla family and shit like that. Them, them motherfuckers is crazy. Like, they don't... White boys can do time, man. They can do time, man. Um, there was a, a part during the um, the story that this guy was telling, uh, one of the videos that I watched, about the Pisces and, the, and the, the DC Blacks, and he was telling how it was a, it was a part during a battle when the COs had appeared and was like, yo, put your weapons down, da, da, da. So the black guys threw their weapons down, man. They was trying to be done with the shit, like ready to lock up, putting their hands up, ready to lock up. So the Pisces went and picked them weapons up, was trying to get at them, like, um, yeah, and this this is a part of a war. And I'm like, I don't know how war to, I don't know how war ready black black men are in regards to that institution shit on the streets. We'd kill up some shit on the streets. Um Normally our own people, people that look like us, but in regards to those prison wars, if you got 50 black black guys about to go to war in a prison yard, 30 of them niggas, probably 40, would rather be doing something else, would rather be going to the visitor room. Like, out of them 50, it's 30. Like, damn, man, my bitch coming in another week. Da, da, da. I got to get away from these crazy ass niggas. Like, let me get away from these crazy ass niggas, yo. Like, uh, man, we trying to get a package in. Like, we trying to get some motherfucking dope in this motherfucker. We trying to get some money. I'm trying to get some, I'm trying to get me a bankroll. I'm trying to send some money home to my girl so she can get her hair done and come up to this motherfucker to see me and probably bring a little something with her. But that's where black men, that's where they, that's where black men mind be at. And and the white boys don't get it fucked up. They call the Aryan Brotherhood the heroin brotherhood. They about getting a package in too, right? But they about killing, yo. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like they that's a high priority with the, the Aryan Brotherhood. The, the the killing, the brutality. Um I did my history on the DC blacks too. And I don't want to just make this about um the Aryan Brotherhood and the DC Blacks because the Aryans the Aryans beef with who beef with them. Like, if you want some static, they'll give it to you. But this is mainly because the members, the white convict, do not care about staying in prison. White boys will get a five to ten year sentence and do the whole dime. Go tell the parole board on the second year. Two years in, man, I'm doing all this shit. I don't give a fuck about parole. Man, I ain't going to do no programs. I'm not doing no fucking programs. I'm not getting no GED. I'm not going to fucking school. And I'm not working. I'm going to sit in my cell all day and smoke fucking buckhorn cigarettes and drink fucking coffee. You dig what I'm saying? Half of the time, them niggas, be, they don't even come out. They, they don't even be going to the fucking child hall to eat. Long as they got fucking tobacco. Long as they got tobacco and coffee, they don't give a fuck about doing time. I'm serious. I'm serious. And if you look at the history of them fucking Aryan Nation niggas, them Aryan Brotherhood dudes, they got a history of coming to jail with something insignificant, a two two to four year sentence. You got a two, they got a two to four. Some of the leadership. Um like Barry Mills and those guys. Just come to jail with a regular case. Regular case. Burglary. Robbery. Whatever. And kill a motherfucker while they there. And stay there until the sun burn out. 
until the fucking sun burn out, stay in fucking jail until the sun burn out. Fuck they family. Fuck getting some pussy again. They just totally, they barbaric. They barbaric. They barbaric. They barbaric. They used to those types of conditions. Similar to them caves in Europe. Peace. Follow me on Instagram at the Real Gully TV. I know I ended this abruptly, but it's gonna be a part two. Y'all just stick. Stay tuned. Peace.